Hello and welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers. In the last episode, we created this monstrosity of a flying printer. And it actually works. This thing is uh, a little disturbing on how big it is and how j <laughs> jiggly it is. Oh my god. I am... Like, this is with share inertia, share inertia tensors on everything. And look how jiggly these printers are as I'm flying. Like, I don't even want to know how bad it would be if I turned the inertia off. However, this is fun. <laughs> I love making Clang be like, I want to get you, but I can't for some reason. But... We're bringing it on over here to the city, as it is time to get this thing into action, and also... Oh my god, my camera is freaking out because there's so many things in the way. We need to get this thing working on doing stuff. Oh, oh. Okay, so my landing gear engaged, but because that the grid it's connecting to is like half the size of reality, it's... Uh, the, the third person camera just absolutely screws up. I don't want auto lock. I want to push down with all of the feet. Uh, about here is about right. Maybe slide a little bit backwards to about there and orient my nose a little bit better onto the center of the road here just so I can line up a connector to this thing again push myself down and then turn off my dampeners oh my god I just want this thing to gently gently settle there we go. Dampeners are off. We are settled down. Now you go back into first person. Then you lock up. Because if you're in third person, you lock up. Then your camera jumps out to a giant everything. But there we are. We have landed the beast in the city. And it is ready to start printing uh, whatever the hell this building is. The office, whatever that is. And this thing is so big. We can even take our little rover here and yeah, our rover, our rover can fit underneath this thing so we can still use our road. Of course, the paver will fit underneath this for sure, but the little rover can, I mean, hey, it allows me to get around. So yes, recently Satisfactory has come out and I have been playing that too much. <laughs> Sorry. But hey, I've put thousand like I put over a thousand hours into uh, Space Engineers and then something new fanciness comes out. I gotta give it a try for a while. But here we are back in Space Engineers. So what I need to do is several things today. We're going to run a connection. We'll just take this a little bit further, drop it down, and then bring it over to here so this thing can connect up to the grid so we can get some resources. Then we shall maneuver this thing into place over top of the building's foundation, lay out some framework so that it has a place to start with. But before all of this, there is something that I thought of that I had as an issue in my previous printing, and I completely spaced on the fact that this is going to be an issue about this printer, is that when I am spinning these printer heads around let's say for example if I say go off of here just real quick and this thing is printing this block here obviously this will weld this block but it's also more than likely going to weld this block which will then make this block available to weld which will then get welded 
blocking the whole arm. So what I have to do is I have to put something on these arms, essentially, to block that so that that doesn't happen. So I need something here in this block space. So what I'm thinking is that, for example, I could do something like this and then just put blocks there and just uh, repeat that the entire way down. It would greatly increase the weight of this uh, entire thing, this printer head, but otherwise I'm going to have issues where blocks are being printed ahead of where they're supposed to be, and that's not going to be a good thing. So I think this is kind of have to be the, uh, the solution here. And also, if I'm not mistaken, you can put a one by one window on the, f the front of these, right? Like, like that. I can even have them encased. I could put a um, catwalk or something on here, so I'd have a mounting point. And put a one by one window. Uh, do I have any access here? Oh no, I don't. I cut back all my access. God damn it! Oh well. I can fly over to the build and repair that's over here and get some resources uh, actually from this connector. No bulletproof glass. That sucks. Why do we have no bulletproof glass? Uh, make me some. But we do have some girders, which is fine. And let me grab some interior stuff. There's 12,000. There, that'll be enough to, to place things. So yeah, I think that's the... the best idea. Also, gotta get rid of my random GPS point in the middle of the freaking air. Uh, where's it? There it is. God. I think that'll be the best idea. Because then I could... I could put catwalk. On there. Oh, and this needs construction components to start. Oh, God. <laughs> Why is it every single time I need resources, I always have the wrong resources on me in order to build stuff? <sighs> components. Gimme. There we go. But. I'm thinking after I get this city, I mean... Essentially, once this thing's in place then the city will just build. Like, I won't have to do anything to it. It'll just be doing its thing. And... After that, what do I do as a major project? I'm thinking, and I kind of want to experiment with this, is that within the mountain here, of course, I'd like to make this hive, like a big hangar bay there. I'm thinking of taking essentially what is this junction, making it like a main junction, maybe taking this area right here and going straight up with it, because it's about the highest point you could get around here, is on the top of this ridge. And then I don't know how high I can get, but trying to make a space elevator. And... I mean, I've already made a... a base here that, if I take a look, that antenna dish is there. If I fly on over here, away from that antenna... We're already four kilometers long base, so you know that functions. So we can make a base that is, say, four kilometers high. That's up to here. The problem is they have to go way longer than that in order to get out into space. So maybe just a, uh, a 10 kilometer high platform? Something that gets you above the majority of the atmosphere? 
so that it's easy to get to space, but not like all the way there. I don't know. But I'm thinking that will be alongside the board cube that I eventually still want to make is the sort of major final project. And I should start on it because if I don't start on the major final project soon, it's going to take me forever to actually finish season two. So that's what I'm thinking. From like right here, we're going to make something because this is uh, three of my grids wide in each direction. And we'll just take that as a tower all the way up to the stars. But anyway, enough rambling about that. And also, sorry if I have any congestion or sniffles. It's the time of year where the uh, the trees are just like, ha-ha, you're going to have um, allergies forever and suck, sucks to be you. So, yeah, I am... Not only am I staying home because I'm working from home due to, you know, reality and the events that are happening in the world, but I am also trying to hide in my house due to massive quantities of ah, <laughs> trees, tree pollen everywhere. But I'm going to build out this sort of addition to the printer head and I will get it done and I'll be right back. Okay, and with this little section built up I can do a little bit of an extendo here. We can just inch this out ever so slowly until those turn yellow. Beautiful. And then Where's my lock here? Nope, that's the wrong thing. I need to go over to this to be able to lock it. Switch. Lock. Excellent. And, whew, oh man, now it is. The best thing apart, building something on welders, is you don't need to weld it. Just turn it on. <laughs> so for this, for these welders, uh, da, 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 we should have uh, the welders. Uh, which makes me, those ones, that's not part of this uh, whole thing here. But these welders will be Printer welders. Just turn it on. They'll pr they'll uh, build it themselves. <laughs> no need for you to do it. Awesome. So I just have to do a few of these things then, which I have no steel plate on me for some reason. But that's okay. Everything is connected now, so I can just uh, grab the resources. Right from there. Yeah, I think this little printer head would uh, would save it. So if I put something there, it's not going to weld. If something goes there, it does get welded. Which is what we want. Oh god, I can't grind it down fast enough. <laughs> but then this way, stuff won't get welded when I don't want it to. And I don't think I'm going to put um, this armor sloping all the way around. I think just the little bits of it here will be enough to hold this on with security. And that way I can keep the weight of this little printer head down. But it's looking pretty much exactly like I expected it to. I'll turn them off and we'll get this block out of here. But yeah. <sighs> There's my little printer head, ready to go. Although I may want to add a couple more catwalks around this thing. Just to keep those uh, things on there a little bit better. Grab the construction components and turn these welders back on. 
And then, all I have to do is just... Place. And they get built for me. <laughs> See, how, something I've wanted to try to experiment with in the past is to do this kind of thing where I have a essentially a self-building ship. So the ship will have welders placed into it in such a way that all you need to do is build the first welder and a pro and a projector and essentially that welder builds the next section with a welder, which builds the next section with a welder, and the whole thing just sort of like builds itself. But considering the very low range of welders, I don't think that would be useful beyond maybe a s small amount of like regenerative armor or something. But yeah, there's my new welder head, and I think this will work absolutely wonderful. So I've turned them off. Now we are going to rotate this into position here. So, uh, take off the rotor lock, and alright, where upper and lower limits are set to there. Now, was it, do I go to the negative this direction? Yes, I'm wanting to go to the negative. So, it looks like I'm going to want to go to about 90 degrees here. And so, hence why I parked at this location. So, we shall rotate this uh, monstrosity into position. <laughs> Just looking at this thing is ridiculous. Like, what the hell am I doing? Sort of feeling. What have I created? Uh, there's the... Uh, next uh, section there. We're just getting some initial seed areas here and also get rid of this tree. You are in the way of progress. And build this out a little bit and build that out and that should be enough for it to begin. So then now we're going to take these horizontal, and what I want to do is, uh, temporarily, I'm going to disconnect this, just so I don't have to look at a whole bunch of uh, stuff while I'm on the platform here. And we're going to throw down a couple programmables, and we're going to put on the uh, sort of length adjusters for uh, the both the horizontal and the vertical with that script. So I just need to grab resources for those. Get them built up. And within here, we'll go program printer horizontal. And on this one, we'll go program printer vertical. And well, both of these will be the piston position. Because then we can use these arguments, which is going to be great. And then we go into the custom data and we get what the group name is going to be. So for our two groups, we have pistons horizontal and pistons vertical. So this one is the vertical one. So we'll grab pistons vertical. We'll grab that name. We'll go into this one, we'll set up custom data, and we'll plop that in there. And then, same for the other one, for horizontal. Did I, uh, print our horizontal? Yeah, yeah, we're all good there. Custom data. Oh, the data isn't there yet, I need to get the piston script in there first, and then check that custom data for, uh, nope, that is the wrong thing to get. Come on, horizontal, pistons horizontal, that's the name I need, then into custom data, pistons horizontal. Okay, so now, 
what I should be able to do is extend these horizontal ones out. So let's give it an argument of, say, 10. Exceeding vacuum and range. Can't determine which subgrade this is ultimately controlling. Huh? Okay. Pistons horizontal. They have a maximum distance of 35, minimum of zero. They're all on. Maybe it's because I have this um, hyphen in the name. Maybe it doesn't like that. Uh, all right, let's just do printer. Printer horizontal. That's what we'll call this thing. So, custom data, printer horizontal, velocity 0.5, make it a little bit uh, easier on them. We'll recompile. And now we'll run it. Yeah, it doesn't like the hyphen in it. That's good to know. Oh, is it doing 0.5 as a combination of all of them, or each one going 0.5? Let's see. <laughs> Printer's horizontal. Yeah, it's a combination for all of them to be uh, 0.5, so we can raise that up a bit. And I'm just going to quickly tag these so that I know which are which here. These with horizontal and... Uh, oh, that's incorrect. This with vertical. And quick copy and paste. So, once I swing that into position, I'm going to set up a timer, I believe, that will, after so much time, will raise these guys up. So that is not centered yet. Uh, needs maybe another how many blocks over. So two and a half, five meters, ten, twelve and a half meters. So plus 12.5 on the horizontal ones here. So, plus 12.5. And run. That's so bloody useful. I love that thing. Now, same thing for these with the vertical. Let's get pistons vertical and change that to printer vertical. Got printer vertical. There we go. I can. I can spell one of these days. Come on. Printer vertical. There it is. And then we can put that into the custom data of this one. Excellent. And this bad boy will be set up so that it goes up one block at a time. We're going to set your custom data as well. Get this velocity back to one. Okay, get rid of your argument there, just for safety's sake. Now you look like you are centered enough to go. So then we will take this thing and uh, let's reverse it down as far as it'll go. Because I believe it's not going to get the first floor, the actual floor of this, which is kind of annoying, but I might just have to adjust in the future how high these landing gear are. Might have to reposition them and just have this so it just lands a little bit lower, because we are one block off here. I'm going to attempt it with this and see how it goes and just just see as you know, we're still testing with all this kind of stuff. 
but what I could do is quite easily add in another little bit of piston to allow myself to pull it down a bit just like basically do like a one piston stacked up in there so that can go a little bit further down alternatively I could just make a platform for this that is always one lower than its place that it needs to weld on or even multiple lower like that doesn't have to be sitting on the road there it could be sitting right here on the ground in which case having this piston gives it a little bit of uh, leeway on how far it can be down but we shall pull this back I think a like 0.1 or 2 of a meter sort of thing we'll take the minimum distance and set this to like 9.8 and pull it back a, a little bit and then do that there's good we got the zero velocity there because then that just gives just enough clearance to this level that things will actually be able to be welded. Because the only thing that will be welded right now is essentially this block and these blocks on the windows. So let us pop over here. We can set up some groups here maybe. Because we got our, our landing gear. We'll have a switch lock. We got our connector. Which will switch have switch lock and our welders toggle on off so we'll tog the welders on they shouldn't start doing anything yet because they have no resources but let us lock and yep they're starting to get stuff so they're able to build up this first bit of wall and this stuff around it because they have the resources for that. So then I set this guy to, if I can actually see him beyond all these uh, things here. Okay. Where are we going? We're, we're swinging around here. Uh, did I not rotor lock up there? Okay, this thing is... Okay, it's going to swing back into place. What the hell happened there? Are you rotor locked? No, you're not. That's what happened. So once this gets into place, I need to rotor lock it. Or else this thing will just go crazy once I try to... Uh, get this thing spinning. Like, we are on the edge here. Between glory and clang. And uh, <laughs> I don't think clang likes the fact that I'm doing this. I don't think he likes it at all. But, hey, we're moving in here. And we'll snap back into position real quick. It was sort of... Oh my god, we, like, bounced off of our, uh, our, our position there. Just get there and stop. Yeah, we're just bouncing. What we need to do is on this guy, we need to rotor lock him. Okay, you're good. Stay rotor locked. You're in position. Now you... I'm going to go into the control panel advanced rotor which is the arm one here that we're on we're just going to go unlimited unlimited and start spinning <laughs> oh my god this is working This is actually, oh my god, this is actually working really well. Uh. Ow, 
Okay, don't stand directly underneath the printer heads. But this is something I can do. I can just go here and get this prepped out. <laughs> Oh, allergies attack, man. Oh, God. I hate them so much. Uh, thankfully, I have a quick access button to mute my microphone. So you guys don't have to hear me sneeze constantly. Oh, God. I hate this time of year. I hate it. Goddamn tree pollen. It's all this tree bukake in the air. It makes me annoyed. Okay. So. I, do I get hurt if I'm crouching? I don't. Okay, good. That's it. Build this stuff. Hell yeah. And I guess the only thing I have to do now is fill out this floor a little bit so we can get this first floor started. And I can do this finishing with a uh, build and repair later. But set the script back up to uh, queue the amount of stuff I need. So that way I always have the uh, stuff on hand. And this printer head has everything it needs. Da -da -da -da. Okay, let's go do that. So I had that set up over here. I should just be able to turn it back on, right? Ordering here, script ready to be launched. Turn it on. And we should be good. You should be ordering stuff. And what was the... I don't have the LCD anymore. What do you need for your LCD here? Do, 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 do. Auto crafting. LCD auto crafting. There we go. LCD panel, and of course I need materials for that, but thankfully we're connected to the resources now right here. I still need bulletproof glass. Why do you need so much bulletproof glass? Make me the glass. There we go. Everything I need for an LCD panel. LCD, auto crafting. That should grab it and boom. Excellent. Then we just need to adjust these numbers. And, uh,. Yes, I want 10,000 glass. Why not? I can have a bunch of things. I got the storage space for them all. 7,600 power cells is fine. 1,000 solar cells is fine. 10,000 grids. Do it! Start building me shit. And now, it's getting everything it needs, and everything's getting built up. So as long as it has what it needs, this speed of rotation should be okay. So we'll, sh we'll see when it gets around to this little section here, as I should have a bunch more uh, glass and stuff for this portion. Will it build up these windows real quick as it passes over them? No, it didn't. Did I not have the windows available? I have zero. Am I auto crafting? I'm making other things. Make me my bulletproof glass. Or those are displays. There's a whole bunch of stuff being crafted up. I might just have to, uh, 
There we go. You make some bulletproof glass. Might have to manually order some things up. Now this this should uh now this should work. Come on, we've got bulletproof glass in stock now. You only need six per, right? Or something along those lines. Boom. Oh yeah. It definitely builds fast enough as long as we have the resources for it. Excellent. Okay, so that should be the entire first floor built. So, I should be able to come on over to here. And I'm just going to label these real quick so I can actually uh, tell which one I want to go to. So text and images, let's edit text, we'll throw in horizontal there. Font size, was it three? Yeah, about three. Text padding, I believe it was like 50% centered. Ooh, oh, 35. That's better. Horizontal, and this one will be vertical. Da, center 35 percent three perfect so now that we're have that first level done we come over to vertical and we put in the argument plus 2.5 and run Exceeding maximum range. Can't determine which subgrid. Oh, it's the same error. Uh, okay. I must fix that then. Why are you having that same error? I thought I fixed you. I thought I did that. Maximum distance 35. Minimum distance 0. You should be good. Printer vertical. This other one. Yeah, is unrelated. So you should be good. Uh, custom data is printer vertical. Recompile. Run. Okay, there we go. I just probably had to recompile it. But I moved up the two and a half meters. And look at that baby go. My god, this is going so fast. <laughs> I love this thing. It's it just it it'll slap together a building in no time flat. So realistically, this is probably the fastest it could go. It could maybe it could go faster, but the fastest I'm comfortable with it going. So, if this is half an RPM, right? Yeah, we're going half an RPM, so we're doing, if one revolution per minute, that's one revolution every 60 seconds, this is half an RPM, so it's one revolution every uh, two minutes. However, we have two arms, so we're only needing half, because we have like the arm is going in both directions, so each arm only needs to do half of it, so it's equivalent to essentially an RPM, one RPM. So this will go this arm will do half of it every 60 seconds and that arm will do that half every 60 seconds so we could set up a timer which essentially calls vertical plus two and a half every 30 no wait every 60 something seconds if you had it on exactly 60 you'd probably be like raising away as you're getting to like the last one but if you say had it at like 65 you would get uh, five seconds of additional rotation to overlap to make sure you finish that layer and like if we come into here we're good we're, we're finished that layer we're all done here so then we'll just slap down a timer as I skip off that for some reason so timer 
timer block. Plop it down right there. And grab everything I need for it because we have resources right here. And easy inventory is amazing. So then this timer is going to call vertical. So we'll go timer, printer. Why can't I spell printer today? Vertical. We'll go in every 65 seconds. We'll set up our actions, which will be the vertical. Printer vertical run with plus 2.5. And then... That's it, right? We need it to call itself. So that it repeats. Start. So then, we'll, we'll just hit trigger now, because we already know we're done this level. So it's going to raise up 2.5. There's no issues with things getting built up prior to the weld head getting there because we have the buffers on each side of the welders. It is going to do an entire entire rotation, really half a rotation. The other arm is going to come over here. Once this other arm gets to this point, it should pass over that point a little bit. Everything should get welded, and then the thing should move up to the next level. And then it should just continue up, and realistically, the majority of this should get built like that. The only problem that I see is the fact that we're running out of resources here. So obviously, our assemblers aren't set up to take care of this. So I'm gonna stop this after it raises one more higher, but we're just going to see where it gets to when it raises. So it's past the point where it needs to be, and then it raises. So it gets a little bit of overlap, and then we're working on the next level. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop the, the raising part of it. Uh, we'll just stop you. You are functional, but we're not going to need you yet. And what I'm really going to have to do is I'm just going to have to let this... Because yeah, we're out of bulletproof glass. This thing should be ordering the bulletproof glass, but it could be that we are just... Could we be lacking raw materials right now? We're not lacking iron. Could... We're not lacking anything, it doesn't look like. We have tons of ingots. Our assemblers are not... Uh are not overflowing. I don't know. Uh, it looks like... Maybe... Are these out of nickel? Is that something I'm out of? No. Not out of cobalt, not out of nickel, not out of any ore. So I don't know why these are not functioning. Probably just not getting the resources in time. However, it looks like I just have to leave these to build a little bit of a stockpile of resources as we just don't have enough. But yeah. The printer is up and functioning. I am going to let this, and just let the game run for a while. I'm going to let it build up a stockpile of stuff like bulletproof glass, because we're going to need a lot for this. And then I should be able to just leave it running and let the timer just all the way to the top. And hell, if we're, we're going to do something like that, I could possibly even make a uh, time-lapse video because I could just sit here in my spectator camera, put my character in a seat, and just like get this view or something like this and just have this thing go... Do, 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 all the way up to the top because I believe that this thing will reach the entire distance of this building yeah see now we're getting some resources these are being built up now we're doing good excellent so 
I'm going to let this thing sit here for the next while. We have enough reach with this arm and we have enough um, rotation with this piston that we should actually be able to sit in this one location and more than likely build this building, this building, and then probably buildings beside them all without having to move. And then really easily, we can just shoot out a conveyor over to here. And then we can build this building, which may be a bit annoying because it's a bit wide at the bottom. But at least uh, the majority of the building, maybe just get the core and then do the bottom myself. But yeah, we should be able to just <laughs> let this thing build. It's glorious. I love it. That's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. And good hunting out there, fellow space engineers.